Um, what are we doing today? Good um, morning. All right, so we're doing sheet metal today. Um, so when we go to in the, yeah, I'm just not. Here. Go to the inventor. We go to new. What do we do now? Make a project. Make a project. So projects, new, single user. Give it a name. Or if you don't change this, where's it going to save it? No. In documents. In my documents, Inventor, then uh, Sheet Metal. So we want to so go desktop, new folder. That way you can get to it easy. And finish. And then double click on it. Factory. So now we're going to do something a little differently than we usually do. So now we're going to, instead of going to standard part, what do you think we're going to do? Sheet metal. Go to sheet metal part. You can convert a standard part into sheet metal, but let's just start here. Things, it goes a little better. <laughs> so, we're here. As you can see, our toolbar is a little bit different. We still have the other model toolbar, but now we have a new one called sheet metal. <clears throat> so, when we go here, first we want to come all the way over to the side and go to sheet metal defaults. <clears throat> so, here's where we've got kind of our basic settings. So if we go to the, look at this, this rule, this tells it how it's going to go about deciding thicknesses and, and everything. Um, the, this unfold rule, that's when sheet metal bends, it, it stretches because the outside stretches and the inside collapses. And so you have to figure out where that point that they're going to bend on is. And so one way to do it is using K factor or by calculating the business compensation. <laughs> um, so we're going to use the K factor, and if you're working somewhere, depend on what radiuses you use, what thickness of sheet metal, um, that K and your equipment, that K factor might change, what dyes you're using. Um, so that's something that you kind of work through. You figure out what it is for your equipment, for your dyes, and then you use that K factor. So you can go in here and edit, edit what that K factor is. Um, <clears throat> tells how it's going to do release for bends, how it's going to do corners. And then you can say what thickness you want here. You can also write here, override, and then type in the thickness here. So we're going to put in a, sh a thickness in. How do we figure out sheet metal thicknesses? How, are, how is sheet metal measured? In gauges, right? So, <clears throat> so here's the sheet metal gauge chart. And you can see it's different for steel versus galvanized versus aluminum. They're a little bit different. What an easy one to remember, a 16 gauge is about a 16th of an inch. So a 16th is 0 0.0625, which is pretty close to the steel thickness. Galvanized, the loom's a little thinner. So you can come in, like, bigger numbers means thinner material, little under numbers, mean thicker material. <clears throat> so let's say I want to do 14 gauge uh, steel. So 14 gauge steel, 0 .747. 0 .07 <clears throat> so let's do that one. So
when I look the bend for the bend radius, it's want to use the thickness, and that's standard. Thing. Your bend radius is whatever your thickness of your material is. Um, for steel, you can get a little bit shorter, a little smaller sometimes. Aluminum, you might want to go a little bit bigger. If you try and bend aluminum smaller than the thickness, it'll it'll crack. Um, especially if you use like 6063 or something like that. So we'll say okay. Now we're kind of here. We don't know what to do. this part here. We need to draw this out somehow. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw one flank, one face. If you look at the inventor, we have a face command. We don't extrude, we have face, right? So we're going to go over here. And we're going to pick one of these faces to draw. So maybe we'll pick this face down here. We'll draw this face. <clears throat> so we'll just look at the dimensions first. 0.75 by 0.75 for that face. So we're just going to draw that. 0.75 is the square. thickness because it knows the material thickness. You have already told it. I'll say okay. So now we have this bottom face. <clears throat> now we need to add this this thing right here. What's that called? Look at those buttons up there. Which one of those Flange. do you think is we'll do that? Flange. Flange. So it's one inch high. And let's look at this one. We can see that that 0.75 was to the inside face of that. And this one inch is measuring from the top up. So we go to flange. We pick on that edge. Just going to put it in. And we could pick the top or the bottom edge, it doesn't matter. It's just, it'll automatically go which way you pick. If you hit this, it'll flip it. So now I can look here, and I wanted that plus of 5 to be the inside face, right? Plus of 5 is to the inside. So here, look, inside. So now that edge that I had at plus of 5 is now lining up that inside edge. I could do it to the outside, I can make the bend start at that edge, or I could have it if I did a different angle. See that now that edge lines up right there. Here the point would line up. Here it starts, here the inside corner lines up. So we want it the inside. We want it one inch long. And then we want, we want it to measure from the top of the bottom. Top. From the top. So that's this one. So right now it's measuring from the bottom. If we go there, it goes measures from the top. See the little picture? This one's measuring from where it'd be if it was a sharp corner, which on a 90 is the same as if it was measuring from the outside. So sharp corner outside or from the inside. So now it's one inch from the top of the face to the end of the flange. <coughs> so I'll say okay. One more flange. Then, then we'll do another one, another one that's 1.5, flange, 0.5. Above it, right? 
but it's measuring from the top. What? Measure from what side? Inside. 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 Um, inside. Green my line there? Yeah. Yeah. I want to measure to the outside distance, right? So I want to pick that one now, right? So it's going right from the inside edge. Now it's measuring from the far <coughs> side. And then it's but it's still lining up this way right here. Because that, that one inch was going from here to here, not to the outside. Okay, okay. And if I look at this part, it's supposed to be 16 gauge. Right? So I can just go back here, go back to defaults. Change the thickness and it changed it. Oh, so you didn't even have to click on the part. No, I just went to the defaults, changed the thickness, and updated it. <clears throat> so now I can do corner round. So instead of having to fill it, I have now corner round. If you can look, I've got a lot less options. So I'm doing something out on sheet metal. I'm not a lot of space to do um, all the other types of fillets. All I need to do is do a basic fillet, so I'm just going to use that. Quarter inch. I can do a chamfer there and there. Now I need to do this cut out here. I'm going to pick on it and sketch like normal. <coughs> then I'm just going to hit cut. Okay. And I pick a profile, and it knows to go through the thickness. I can just say okay. Do another one out here. If I do a cut on this one, I can just say thickness and it go down there. If I say cut across bin, look at what happened. It's actually taking it and kind of folding it around the bend. So in the flat pattern, that's how big the cut's going to be. So let's switch that just so we can see it. Basically, if you unfold the, the sheet metal, it'd be a flat cut. So cut that. Here, I'm going to leave it straight. See, so just did that. It only went down the thickness, so I could have told it go down 0.25, and so now that cut's actually going down 0.25 from that top surface here in the bend view. But if I said cut across the bend, the thickness, and I hit flat pattern. Now it's actually measuring that 0.75. So go back to fold apart, flat pattern. You can see this change now from create flat pattern to go to flat pattern. Whenever you're doing this, you always want to hit that first before you go try and make a drawing. Because until you hit that, it hasn't figured out what flat pattern is going to look like. You can also see that now in my in my browser I have a flat pattern. If I look back here, I have a hole half an inch up from the very bottom, three centered three. quarter center. So I'm going to put that in. Sketch. Go hole. hole. And then I'm going to pick that at my edge. 
So I want to make sure I pick that bottom edge there. So we get my point five. So I can do that. If I did a sketch, I could, then I could make it a hole from the point, right? I could line it up centered. But I'm still wanting dimensions from that very bottom line, bottom line to get my half inch. And again, look here, my depth. It knows it wants the thickness. And put it in. So I can go to the flat pattern. There it is. Yeah. Well, we've gone over the different options for holes before. Yeah, but so, so if you want to be able to use constraints, you have to do it from sketch. But. Yeah. Thank you. So there's my part. I've hit flat pattern, so it's created the flat pattern. Then from here, what do I do? Save it. Name. You always save. Put a name on it. So Maybe I should have saved it before. Maybe after I had done the first couple things. Who drew it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I need to fill my eye properties, right? I don't know how get wrong. I never knew you were going to talk about that. The lot, it was a lot of miss on my lab too. It was my eye property. Everything has to be my lab. Whatever. In the description. Fill those in. Okay. Save it. Now what? Copied in my folder. Now I've got my template that I copied in. So I'm going to open that template. Now I've got all of my stuff set up right. Now I'm going to insert a base view. You notice here, now I've got folded model or the flat pattern. So I'll put in the folded ones first. And then I'll put in the flat pattern. So another base view, flat pattern. There's the flat pattern I can tell it to turn. Back side. Okay, I want it like that. That in there. I don't need a side view of the flat pattern, right? Now I need to dimension it. So what dimensions go where? Because some of our dimensions need to go on the flat pattern, and some need to go on the form views. Where do you think, which, which dimension do you think they should go where? Overall. Yeah, some overalls on the flat. The chamfer. What else, what else should go on the flat pattern? The chamfer. Yeah, dimensions to the bend lines. What else? Maybe. The Part of it. it. Yeah. Um, one of the things is wherever I've worked is that flat pattern gets dimensions that you can check in the flat pattern. Um, and then in the form view, you get anything that you can't check until it's after it's formed. So the, the flat pattern might get every dimension on it, <coughs> but you don't really care where this hole is when it's flat, right? Because it, it might depend on your, your your setup. This hole might change position in here, up and down. But you care about where it is here. So depending on where you work and what their procedures are, we might dimension it here, or we might not dimension that vertical dimension and just do it here, or do it here as a reference. Kind of depends on what your boss says and what the shop is used to. 
Um, my, my rule is that anything that you can measure here, like all this stuff, you can measure all that stuff you can measure here to verify that it's correct before you even go to bend it. That hole, depending on your, your equipment, it might move up and down. <coughs> um, and, what, and the shops, because if you're in a farm that's out to someone, they might have to go in and edit the K-factors to match their equipment. But you don't really care what it's like here as long as it's right when it comes out. <coughs> so let's do the bent view first. So we're going to dimension here. And on the bent view, all we need is the things to check after it's bent. So all we need is there, to there, there to there. Bottom line. Oh, yeah, bottom line. And there to there, right? So do I even need that top view here in the form view? No. Sorry. All I need is these two views. That's all the mention. And this one I don't even really need here, right? But it's nice to have, so I'll put it as a reference. Remember, we don't want to over dimension things. Okay, you already got it on the Yeah, because it's going to be on here too. Because that's something they can check here. Oh no, no, that's just the no. distance of the small holes. That's all. No, that's just the thickness of the material. So those are all the dimensions I really need on the bit view. So were, everything else is going to go here on the flat. That's nice. Nice chapel. Yeah. No percent percent. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, you know, that for degrees, percent percent D. Okay. So I get all that in. So I get all that in. That's all something to check. <coughs> but I also need the bend lines. So I need from here, to bend line, to bend line, to there. And depending on you where, where you are, that changes how they do that. Um, the way I like to do it is with ornament dimensioning. Because one way to do it is a baseline. So you pick the starting point, and you pick the other lines, continue, bring it out, and then create. So you can do a baseline like that. And now that's even with a lot of space. It's another way is ornate. Now it just takes up a lot less space than it did with the baseline. Yeah. And it's still giving the same measurement. And that's a that's a, do what your boss tells you to do. Some places like to do them from each side. So that they know how far back to set the stops. Whatever your shop, the shop you're working with says, 
that's what you do. <laughs> yeah, you want to make it easy for them to make your part. A lot of times you turn the part around to do that back yeah. then. And so. That's the easy part. You should be able to figure out the easy Yeah. So that's kind of the general guidelines. And sometimes you might only do a side of it, or and then if it's the same all around. Or you might just do from the outsides. But somehow you have to dimension where those bend lines are. What else do we need on that? Side of the hole. Oh, yeah, that'd be a good one to have. Type of material? So, hole size. I could put a reference dimension for where that hole is, too. You know, said I'm keeping all my bend things on one side and everything else on the other side, just to kind of keep the side clear. Less confusion. Mm -hmm. so anything else I need on this? The Guys, I've been asking about before. What am I missing? The material. I'm gonna put that down here. So my material is actually gonna go under. So if I save this. I think I had it under uh, 16. Yeah, so I'll try to add it under subject. If I close this real quick, yes. Missing something. Actually, two something that are the same. And it's on this tab. It's on that tab. That's nice to have a bin there. Is it? And it's just going up or down. Because for this shape, I can get a U shape out of it, right? Yeah. Or I can get that Z shape. If I need to know which way to bend those, if I need to know to bend that up or bend it down. So if I go over here to bend, and I can click on it, it puts it in so it doesn't go down 90 degrees at that radius. so I can pull this. On a bigger part, it's not, not as hard to, to get it to fit. So you just leave it on the line. On this one, it's nice to kind of pull it off to the side so we can see where it is. So I know that okay, this one's being bent down. This one's being bent up. So they can put it in the machine right. What happened? What would I do if I wanted one that was opposite of this? So I wanted it to be like this and like that. Thank you. Make it was, it's exactly the opposite. This one went up, that one went down. What I do? So like, if I had it, one to go on the right hand side, one to go on the left hand side, so they're bent opposite of each other. What what can I do for that to make my my life easier? Yeah, I'd just mirror the part in the assembly, right? So you're on the assembly, mirror the part. Now this one, I could use the same thing, just flip it over, right? But what if I had a little notch right here where I couldn't just flip the part upside down? <clears throat> what would I do? I'd make a little note 
Oh, but in the opposite way? And I'll take left side shown. Right side bent opposite. So that, so that, to do this one for the left, when I want it right, they bend that one up and that one down. So that way you have to do one drawing instead of two drawings for, for just left and right. And then we can save that. Questions on that piece? <coughs> um, so there's a lot of other options here. We only covered basically two and then cut, cut and those. So there's a, there's a few more like contour flange, hem. What's makes, a hem? Makes it to where the corner's not sharp. Yeah, it, it folds it all the way over. So let's do a new one. I can do multiple flanges at once. <clears throat> so I can go to him, click on it, and you can see it's gonna, gonna fold it over. Right now it's making the gap, whatever the thickness is, and the length, the thickness times four. If I could go in here and I could adjust this, so I could say the length one, 0.5. I could bring the gap down. I could go to the shape and change it to a teardrop. Or roll and just tell it. Tell what angle to roll at. I have it a double. Yeah. You have to your flat pattern and it folds in. Just make a bend line. Also come here to corner scene. That can adjust how these corners are hitting. Maybe I want to make them closer. sketch of a new flange. So if I want kind of a complex thing, I can create a sketch here. Turn all those to construction. I want that to go out and to go up. And I want to have a big fill up there. On that for some reason. I want to have that that profile on that my new flange. Now I can go to contour flange, pick that profile, pick my edge, and I can get that to go on. That's pretty cool. You can see this one's not joining like this one is because I put an extra corner on it. If I ended up modifying that corner.
you know how it's going to miter to all those corners? <coughs> so unfold it. So that, that contour plan lets you make weird shapes. So I could have just big, big arcs or, or, or whatever I want. Um, say I do flange a bunch of times. I could draw it out as one contour flange and have it do it. Also, you can see I can change which way it's going. So is it going, is the line lined up with the outside or the inside of it? It seems in the way. But that's, where, that's my sketch right here. Is it the outside, the inside, or is it halfway? This one is probably wanted to be the outside, right? I do it on the outside. Maybe I want to keep the outside. You can see how many adds a bend in here to the bottom. And then it keeps whatever radius I had drawn for that radius. <coughs> I'm just going to put a point in there. So if I use this punch tool, it's got different preset sizes. So, curve slot. Little connectors, repeater stuff, keyholes, keyways. So you can see that keyway, open it. It wants to put it in there. So center. And it, it, want, it puts it in based on where that point was. If I didn't have a point there, it wouldn't have done it. If I had multiple points, I would have put multiple of them in. But I can go back in here to the size and I can change the size of it. What about depth? It's cutting all the way through. But does it have a depth control where you can... It cuts all the way through. It cuts all the way through? It's a punch. Oh, it's a punch. If I had chosen to do one of the embosses, so like the round emboss, is it showing you the, yeah, the emboss on the corner? Yeah, puts it in there. But the, be, before you actually, yeah, it, don't worry about it showing over there. But that's just, that's the actual emboss. No, it's uh, just, it just showed it over there for some reason. I don't know why. Oh, okay. But there's the emboss there. So I go to the flat pattern. You can see on the flat pattern it still shows it embossed. And that's uh, um, in fishing options. That's in here somewhere. to show it whether it's embossed or not. Yeah, I don't know where it is. But, so that's the emboss there. But it, because it really, it doesn't matter what it looks like, because on the flat pattern it's going to give you a sketch or a point. All you care about is that center point, because uh, the punch is gonna gonna make the emboss for you. Because it already knows the measurements. And yeah, it's the, it's the size of the punch. So all you care about is the center point. Um, rip would be if you had a box and you wanted to cut the corners off to unfold it. Um, but it's better to start out in shoe metal and actually build it up as a shoe metal part. Contour roll, that's a more advanced one where you'd actually have a sweep of a, a profile. And that then lock. That slowly goes to a roll? 
Um, yeah, it's it, it's like it's like a sweep, but it's at main Ashima. Oh, okay. So I could make. So you already opened the sheet metal, uh, yeah. part? That's where the rip comes in handy too, is that now I can now it knows how to unfold it. And then I can just be welded back. Yeah. So now you just bend it up, weld the seam. single point to uh, point to point. So rip face there, start point, center there, the end point, center down there. Is that okay? And you already told it the thickness and everything. Well, it, 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 has, it has a gap size which is the same as the thickness of the material. Okay. So I could go in and change that value so if I want it smaller. That's really hard to bend. It's 
square to a oh, zero. <laughs> no, you can't do zero. You have to have some kind of angle between the things. Is it coming so, from the flat? Is it? Yeah, so right now I'm measuring the angle between yeah. the line and the and the arc. I could do it, but between the distance between the line and the arc, or I could do it the, the length of the line. You get it in five. So the length of the facet I could I could do. So you just in all three of those, you just have to change the number to get it down to how how smooth you can make it. Yeah. It's just it's just a, a matter of how many bins do you want to do. So yeah, that's a lot of work. So a you made lot it a quarter inch of work on each facet. <laughs> that's still you got a lot of bins going on now. Yeah. <laughs> so I got that part one part one I was working on. No. Uh, I'll on to the side. <laughs> I'll do that one later. Yeah. Saving it for the next guy. <laughs> You're a little bit better. Sorry, man. I ran a little behind. That makes Ten is better. Evaluation today? Well, it depends on no, what the part is. No, missed evaluation. It was yeah. last week. No, I was here. Where you and you can also... Um, oh, yeah, the Dean. It's Tuesday. You could also tell it. When you were making that, it, instead of doing Tuesday, that one, you uh, pulled it this one. Methods. And then it would do, it would do it still round. But then it wouldn't give you bend lines. So you'd have to roll it. Yeah, so you'd have to roll it. Yeah. So, all right. Um, questions? All right. So what you're going to do for practice is you're going to do this one. We've already put it in Moodle's down. So in on the, the H drive, I put that one. It's called 10A. Also, I put a, this projector mount, mm -hmm. which is this. Okay. You want to it? It is. Oh, you want it to do that part? Yeah. That's cool. Piece of wood. Not that bad. This part here. Flat was this side. One, two, one, two, one, two. Oh yeah, no, 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 no. This part is not the screws are in counterboards. You can't even see that circle. I mean, you see it from here, but you It's this piece here. So if you need to look, come look at it. Simple part, top, front, side, more or less if you need them. If it's a more complicated part, it's whatever you need to show. It could be 50 views. And none of them could be the top view. Just the standard way to go, no, right? there is no standard way. That's the basic way that you learn in the beginning. Really, it's whatever you need to describe the part. And that's what the standard set is. Did you want to describe with at least, at least uh, drawing as possible? With at least, yeah. But this, if I try to make just just three views, this would be very confusing. If I did the top view, some of the stuff would be hidden. So that's why I did, and it fit better on the paper in this layout. But I did both the front and the back, or in this case, the top and the bottom, whatever. The name doesn't matter, because in order to split up the dimensions into two different views. <clears throat> because having all these dimensions in one view would be way too confusing. But the name of the views or which views you have, there is no standard. The standard says whatever you need to describe the part. Which could be one view, which could be 50 views. Yeah, but you don't, but don't you uh, uh, describe it? Like that's a uh, front view and, and No, you, know, you don't name them. No? No. Don't, you don't name views. That's that's not standard at all. That's never been standard. 
So you're supposed to get it and, and then uh, and supposed to try to guess. It, it doesn't like, matter if you call this the front or that the front. It's the same part, right? It's the same part whether you call that the front or you call that the front. The only thing that matters is that when you install it, it installs this way. But it doesn't matter what the layout is here. It matters that you can see what the part is to, to, to make it. As long as it's laid out like that. And actually, when, we, when you guys did a, do a drawing of this, are you going to have to have this many views? No, just no. Depends on what the part is. No, because on, now on yours, you're only going to have to mention this crossing bends on your form view, but you're going to have a flat pattern that has most of them, right? I didn't do a flat pattern because I didn't want to. Because you can't, it's harder to reverse it from a flat pattern than it is from the form view. And guess how I made that? I sat there and measured this. Don't get caught up in names. Don't think about names. Naming views is for the basic level 